Are you tired of Games Workshop's bloated prices? Do you want to showcase a great centerpiece model in your army, but can't afford or justify the cost? Well, you come to the right place. I'm all about showing you awesome proxy models that you can bring to your Warhammer games that don't break the bank. Today, I'm going to show you how I 3D printed and painted Bellacore, the Dark Master, for under $15. So let's get to work. I printed him out on my Elugu Saturn II 8K. I'll show you where I sourced this awesome model later in the video. I was able to fit the entire model, which came in 10 pieces, including the base, on a single build plate. The first thing I tackled was the body on the base. I chose this equator to be draped over the rock where I, he fell. He already has a decent pose that should work. At this point, I realized that his robes in the back of the model were preventing the model from lying flat, so they needed to go. This process is all about trial and error. Another quick modification was to make a cut in his leg so it would hang down more naturally in death. Then I started with cutting off all his limbs so I could repose them. I just needed to make some modifications to get the model to look right. I would then need to recreate his rump, legs, and his robes again. For this, I turned to green stuff. I'm really not a great sculptor. Green stuff is frustrating to me, so even if you're new to this process or it's not really your thing, that's okay. You can do it. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's only the base after all. I don't even have the right tools for this. I really could use some metal sculpting tools, but I ended up making do using my X-Acto knife for much of it. I like to tell stories on my bases. In this case, a Sequoia Prime and his squad challenged Bellicor. Big mistake. I can just imagine the rest of the squad dead around the base. If this wasn't for YouTube and I had more time for this project, I may have added more dead bodies onto the base. Once I was happy-ish with the body, it was time to start gluing Bellicor together. So I opened up a new bottle of Gorilla Glue with the brush, and it was pretty much unusable. It was thick and dried up. Has this ever happened to you? It's a little frustrating. Take a minute and write in the comments and tell us what frustrating hobby issues really grind your gears. So I ended up turning to some standard super glue, but used the brush anyway, and that worked out just fine. I was a little unhappy with some of the parts not fitting together very well. The supports on the model were good, but not perfect, which caused some warping. Again, if I had time, I would have used Milliput and fixed it, but I needed to get this model finished, so... It was at this point that I realized something wasn't right. The new Bellicor model comes on a 100mm base, so I grabbed a 100mm base, bark chips, some Chaos Scatter Terrain from the Warcry Catacombs box set, and my trusty tub of Crayola Air Dry Clay, and got to work. I didn't really have a plan when I started except that I wanted to mount the printed base on top of the larger base. I was crafting to add some height and presence. Air dry clay isn't like Milliput. You need to glue it down. It won't just stick to the base. Another thing to know about it that it's pretty heavy. So you have to take that into consideration. In this case, that was a good thing. The weight will stabilize the model. I feel like with the original base and the model's huge wingspan, it's asking for trouble. It would most likely be tipsy, and no one wants a large model falling all over the table. The air dry clay takes a while to cure, so I let it sit overnight in a room that I 3D print in, which stays around 75 degrees. The next day, I finished off the base with some Vallejo earth texture to bring everything together. While I was at it, I added a couple fire braziers on the side, with the plan to do some quick and easy OSL later. Next it was time to slice up those wings, so it was Dremel time. Just make sure you use the required PPE, you definitely don't want to be breathing in resin dust. I ended up using a few different bits, but started with the rotary cutting wheel to create the rips at the end of his wings, then moved to some grinding and carving bits for the holes in the wings. It'll make the tears more convincing if you bevel some of the edges of the rips, which will also give some relief for shades or washes to cling to. My final bit I used was a metal Metal buffing tool to buff off sharp edges to give a more realistic appearance. Just be careful, it can catch on the resin pretty easily which caused this to happen. Once I repaired the damage, it was jewelry making time. I pulled out the Citadel Skulls box, some 1mm wire and a spool of 4mm chain. The latter two I acquired at Michael's, the arts and crafts store. I'll tell you, creating the chains was a pretty arduous task. I don't have nimble hands and fingers. So working with such small bits and bobs was not easy for me. After a while, I was able to get the technique, but it, it took me some time to pull this one off. So it's time for me to pop in here and let you know where I sourced this sweet model. This one comes from Lord of the Print. It was released in December of 2021 with the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse collection. That set was awesome. It got me really to take notice of Lord of the Print. And as soon as I saw this model, I knew there was a Bellacore proxy in my future. And here we are. If you're sick of paying the GW prices, 
smash that like button. This will tell YouTube there's a lot of people out there that want to see this kind of video and more people will be able to find that 3D printing is the answer. With the model finally complete, it was time to give it a prime. It's winter, so where I live it can be difficult to use spray cans. It's pretty darn cold out and the humidity is pretty darn high. So I'm going in with the airbrush on this one. I'm using Molotow All for One Signal Black to prime. Next, I sprayed petrol a dark blue from below to add some shadows. Before I get too far, the inspiration for this paint job is Tom Shaw's Bellicor skin created for Total War Warhammer. I thought it was pretty cool. I think the Games Workshop paint job is kind of weak, but I don't want to get too crazy away from the lore, so I thought this was good compromise. In any case, then I followed up with gray blue dark from above, then took it even lighter with cool gray pastel from above as well. I've often heard Squidmar saying that he doesn't like the prime with an airbrush because the paint isn't durable. Well, I've never had an issue with Molotow and durability. There is a reason urban graffiti artists gravitate towards the Molotow paint line. If it can hold up out on the streets, it can certainly hold up on your minis. Next, I threw some Dollar Rowney flesh tint into the airbrush and most appropriately added the skin tint to his face, chest, palms of his hands, and the fleshy parts of his wing. Finally, I came in with some white ink and finished off the zenithal. The next step in the plan is to come in with the some contrast paints and do all the base coats. I wanted to start off tackling the skin. So I took Bellicanum Gray, Space Wolves Gray, and Contrast Medium, mixed them in equal parts, and base coated all the skin. Then I used Dark Oath Flesh on the areas that I used the flesh tint, his face, chest, hands, and wings. Gorgrunt of Fur is one of my favorite contrast paints. I almost always find a way to use it, so in this case, I base coated the fur lining his armor. Snakebite Leather for the leather, and Sigvald Burgundy for the loincloth. All his horns got base coated in Rykarth flesh, and I used Black Templar for what little fur he has, like his tail. At this point, it was time to do the metallics. Maybe I should have done them first, but I'll just have to be careful. I base coated all the metal with 50-50 mix of Vallejo Dura Aluminum and Army Painter Plate Mail Metal. If you're wondering why I mixed two different similar metallic paints, check this video out after this one. Then, in typical Slave to Darkness fashion, I lined the armor with Retributor Gold from Citadel. That pretty well took care of all the base coats. Now it was time to make it all grimdark and grimy with some oils. For this model, I'm going with the standard black, brown, and magenta oil washes. But this time, I'm going to be a little more selective with the placement of the washes. I don't want to go whole hog on this one. So the metals, skin, and ground get the black wash. The metals, horns, and the rocks get the brown wash and the wing flesh, face, neck, and hands get magenta wash. I didn't bother to wait any length of time to begin erasing the oils with makeup sponges. This is a super quick way to add shading to your mini, but still have control over where it stays. Love it. After the oils, I let the model dry overnight, so back in the print room it went. We're heading around the home stretch here. The final step is giving it some highlights and bringing the brightness up. I'll start on the skin with some rust gray, only highlighting the upper areas. You know, I really wish I could have left the wings off until the very end, like I did with the sword hand. This model has over an 11 inch wingspan, so trying to paint and film around them was interesting. Once all the highlights have been rendered, it's time for my quick and dirty OSL. I started off with blasting Liquitex Yellow Orange Ozo through the airbrush, creating the light radius of the fire braziers. 
This is by no means going to be a realistic rendition of lighting effects. I decided on this more as a way to give a little more interest in the base and to not have to worry too much about painting the back of the model. Then I took Vallejo Transparent Red and carefully went in over it to create red and orange areas of the firelight. Then I put Liquitex Deep Turquoise into the airbrush and lightly sprayed the back of the model until I was happy with the nighttime lighting effect. I thought like I may have overdone it with the red for the fire. So I first dry brushed some Army Painter Moon Yellow onto the ground to get that yellow back into the uppermost areas. Then I used the same paint to highlight the braziers, metals, and bellicor. Then a flat black base rim to finish the job. Is it going to win any awards? Hell no, but I'm proud of it regardless. I think it's pretty cool. And for only $15 to get a really cool centerpiece model on the table, I think that's a win. I hope you like it. Hey, thanks for watching my video. And if you're still here, you might as well smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed this one, why don't you watch this video next? And take a look how I printed and painted a proxy of Angron, the Primarch of the World Eaters. Thanks!